Octopath Traveler 2 is a work of art. So after completing every side story, story, optional dungeon, and pillaging every NPC I could find in this game, which totally didn't take me 128 hours, I can say that this is not only a fantastic turn-based JRPG, but it's finally changed my JRPG top 10 list for the first time in over two decades. Everything about this game is better than the original, whether it's the clever camera work behind the HD 2D set pieces enchanted by Yasunori Nishiki's incredible soundtrack, or the eclectic cast of characters, side characters, and NPCs Octopath Traveler 2 delivers. While the stories themselves aren't anything new, the storytelling is incredible and the different types of stories provide a little something for everyone. Speaking very abstractly so as not to spoil anything, and if you've played the game, these scenes will probably pop up in your mind as I abstractly mention them. I love the very first part of Temenos' first chapter, the final boss fight of Agnia's story, the end of Partitio's story, the beginning and end of Hikari's story, Casti's entire story, including the very cliched memory loss at the beginning, the beginning and end of Ochet's story, Rone's entire story, and Oswald's last two chapters. Every character in this game's story is told well, and the game is very good at making you dislike the villains too. The stories come together a lot more organically in the end than in the first game, with a bit less of a lore nuke, but still some amazing twists. Great effort was definitely made to have the characters interact with each other more than in the first game. The gameplay is where Octopath Traveler 2 really shines though. Most NPCs can be interacted with in four different ways. They have their own backgrounds, special moves, and items to obtain. Many can even be recruited to follow you around and confer bonuses either in combat or when shopping. Whether you steal the items or purchase them fairly, it's a lot of fun interacting with NPCs in this game and can power you up significantly. All the detail put into the NPCs, their often amusing backstories and hilariously their overpowered special skills actually make them somewhat memorable if not endearing. The turn-based battle system of this game is given depth by giving the characters their own unique EX skills and latent talents to use in battle. The combat pacing feels great and with a good strategy you can fight higher level enemies. This can get very deep when you start factoring in how the job class's divine skills change the way battles work. Exploring the world is fantastic, whether you're running the fields, spelunking, or exploring the open sea. Sea exploration in particular, while limited, was still a lot of fun and reminded me of traveling on an overworld map in a lot of older JRPGs. My favorite part about this game was visiting a town beyond the level 45 areas for the first time at level 25 and acquiring very strong equipment before I even went beyond every character's introductory chapters. In fact, I didn't even start anybody's second or third chapters until I was around 50 hours into the game and the fact that so much content wasn't locked behind story despite this game not being marketed as an open world game is incredible. Because there's so much to do, I never had to grind until I challenged and defeated the game's very optional super boss. Of course, it's not perfect. The first character you select at the beginning of the game is locked into your party until you complete their story. You have to go to the tavern and switch in other teammates to do all the different path actions at different times of day. The long list of items in battle isn't very convenient to search through either when you need something specific. It can also be easy to forget about NPCs you know you might want to revisit in the future when your party is stronger. On the flip side, the game does have a journal that logs all the side stories even if it doesn't have a detailed bestiary to refer to for things like item drops, steals, or monster skills. On that note, it would have been great for the game to include a log of NPCs met in every location in the game. One thing I love is how easy it is to flip between day and night with the touch of a button, which is fantastic in a game like this where NPCs can appear day or night only. If you didn't like the first game, I couldn't recommend this one to you until I know why you didn't like it. But if you've never played Octopath Traveler before and you consider yourself a fan of turn-based JRPGs, this game is definitely worth a try. In the tradition of classic Final Fantasy and many JRPGs, this game doesn't require any experience with prior games to enjoy, and it's available on PC, Switch, PS4, and PS5. I love this game and had to talk about it, to the point where I decided to spend more time to devote an entire video to it. Let me know if you enjoyed it, and maybe I'll stop making shorts for a while to concentrate more on this kind of content. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.